Uh, I played way more Dragon's Dogma, which I see you also played more Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, I uh, kept poking at that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I uh, found the Sphinx for the second time, and I correctly defeated all of the Sphinx's riddles. What a great encounter. That is the best thing in the whole game, easy. It is fantastic. I'm basically I'm basically holding out to see what that's all about. Um while wandering a little bit around. Like I'm kinda I was beelining for a bit and then I stopped to um do a couple side quests here and there. But yeah, I want I want to see what this this big Sphinx deal is. Well, she's out of the way. So you you gotta really get out there mm. to get a hold of her. Uh, and she has a bunch of riddles, and the riddles are all f***ing great. They are great. They also are a kind not not in terms of absurdity, uh, but they are somewhat similar to t uh, not text adventure point and click riddles to a degree, in that they require you to intuit what the person who designed it wanted you to do. Okay. They're not like, hey, what walks on two legs and three legs and four legs, you know, kind of crying kind of riddle, right? They're like, use the game's internalized mechanics to solve this kind of thing. But that includes figure out the developer logic behind it. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm I, I'm I'm glad you're talking around it and I'm and I'm legit curious to see what all what all this means. Um the one thing I did see was a, a, a video of someone jumping on a titty and, yeah. and grabbing on. And then, like, I was like, what? Um, yeah, just jump on it. Yeah. It's fine. The This game has its... its uh, it, it I feel like the Itsuno looked at illusory walls in um, Dark Souls 1 and went, those are great. <laughs> I, and, and just went like, yes, let's leave... Let's let's work that into our own way. Uh, with there's like hidden flaps and doors, corners that like lead to things that are not super uh, clear on how to open and stuff. And in some cases, it's a matter of like you know um, turning the right corner and baiting an enemy to like bash the the gate open. I think my favorite one was there was a door I could not figure out how to open to the point where I had to I had to like hit up Susie and be like Susie how the fuck do you open this door I bet you this, I know which door but go this on cave. Mm -hmm. it's the one that connects to the encampment uh, in the in the elf yep cave that's the exact the, I was about to talk about yeah. I was about to talk about <laughs> yeah. that exact door and how I <laughs> scraped in circles and I was like oh like, here's wow. my other outro here's my other exit to this cave and then then there's this and I'm like I'm, am I an idiot what am I missing and am then I, I stupid and yeah. then I yeah and then and in the I asked Susie and she's like yeah go back at night so skeletons will open the door for you, and I'm like... Oh, no, 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 no. I was there at night. That's not at all what happened. So how the fuck did you do it? Uh, I, well, it's not open yet, but this, it is uh, initiate the next quest line step with the elf back in, in Vermont. And apparently that leads to that door getting open. But if you do the first part of that quest and then walk up into that area, into that cave, you're just it's going to be an, a, a locked door. Oh, I left, rested, went back in, quit out, and reloaded to to reopen the fucking thing. And you have to initiate that part of the elf quest. The first part of it what? doesn't but do I it. I did all his stupid shit. So uh, uh, that's that's one of the bits, right? I did. I did his all his stupid shit. He's chasing my dick well there's no skeletons there to do it and i noticed in another cave that uh there was a, a zombie that you have to shoot from far away um <laughs> yeah. to, to, to bait you to come to you which is perfect because i switched over because i started uh switched over to uh, archer so i was yeah. you know messing around with that um and and uh um so yeah, p p anyway, whatever. People making up bullshit. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, in this case, there was nothing to target, so there's no, there nothing to open the door there. So that required the elf quest to, to continue. But then scraping back around the other side of that, I, I went up to a part where I was like, there seems to, must be a way past this thing. And then it was like, oh yeah, one section of this wall is breakable. But I had like, I'm like, oh God, the asset for rock that can be broken was there 
Um, it's highly similar. It looks. What it, it blends right into Unbreakable Rock, and the pawns never pointed out anything about it until like the fifth time walking yeah. through that area where it's like, oh, this area is breakable. And then Wooly the Pawn runs to the area below and starts swinging at nothing. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, he must be f swinging at something here, but it can't be that. So therefore it must be this. And then it worked. And I was like, Jesus Christ, you janked into a... Oh, I, it's like I'm it's an illusory so wall. i uh. fun playing this game. And, I, and the further I get into it, Okay, oh god, Dragon's Dogma 1 was like this too. I'm having so much fun playing this game. And the further I get into it, the less finished it feels. Oh yeah, it feels that way a lot. Um, Once you get to, I'm sure you've seen people talk about Batal, mm -hmm. the Beastron Nation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to the south. You get to Batal, and like, the game's questing experience just evaporates. Like, in the main city, that's like the equivalent to Vermond. There are four quests that I found talking to everyone. I'm sure there's like one or two more, but like it evaporates. And the area is just as big as Vermin. So it's just like lots and lots of like, man, there's a lot of enemies in this area. And they are overlap. They're they're like aggro zones are overlapping onto each other. Mm -hmm. So you go down there and you fight your fucking ass off. Ah. <sighs> Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> this is the this is the game. Will he accept it? Of course, I accept it. I get that it's all janking its way through. It's just, it's it's very janking. It's it. janking in a way that is like sometimes I'm like, ha, look at that jank go, and other times I'm like, that's not. I don't enjoy that type of jank. You know, you know what's been happening. Um, what's been happening? My sessions have been uh, stopping based on when when Dar dragon's dogma crashes which it's reliably going to do it's oh yeah uh -huh. th then it's time for me to switch over to hell divers and then yeah. when hell divers crashes which it's reliably going to do then i can switch over to balatro and that'll be my night <laughs> <laughs> the game will tell me when to stop playing because it's been happening so consistently that's that's great you so know, did you do your that, part Jake. pushing the? Did you do your part? Did your part eradicating the automatons over the weekend? I I did my part. You know, we got them. They're gone. They're completely dead, and they're gone, and they're back, and they have taken like fifteen planets, and it's worse than it's ever been. Yeah. Um. In both cases, when I'm losing upwards of you know. 15 or 20 minutes of, of, of Roman and shit. That's like, God damn it, guys. God fucking damn it. At least once it happened in a long fight and I resumed just before the fight started. So that yeah. was okay. But like, it's... I found I Dragon's Dogma... I can't Dogmas. believe how often both of these games are crashing. I, I, I found Dragon's Dogma's like... I'm going to use air quotes. Constant autosave to wildly wildly vary in terms of what it thinks is an important time to autosave because i've had the game crash or i've left or you know whatever and like i didn't lose anything it saved it and like five times in a row it saved all the right places and then i will have like what i can only describe as a mass effect one situation mm -hmm. where you're like why was the autosave 30 minutes ago <sighs> why yeah 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 um at least at least by getting your house the in costs aren't a, a continuing thing but um you get just you get i want to say like if a pawn is about to ask you a question that you have to answer with a prompt with a with a not with a prompt with a gesture you get the first four words to actually answer the, pa the the sentence, and then by the time the rest of the sentence plays out, it's too late. So it's like, hey, Master, I think there's a treasure chest. By the time the word chest is said, if you say yeah. go, it's like, nope, it's too late. Somewhere no, around I, I these parts. I don't parts. care anymore. You're telling me to go for the quest, right? <laughs> go, go, go. 
Go, mm. go. You, I interrupted you saying the sentence. Go, go. Uh, no, no, the window's gone. <laughs> so I have. So, uh, I'd like to clarify something that someone in the chat uh, said because uh, this type of thing needs to be clarified. They say that the in, but the house you buy doesn't count as an in rest, so you get, don't get any RC. It absolutely does. You're completely wrong. Your pawn just sucks and no one is hiring them. Oh, that's a lie. It's that's also been true. found that Capcom is auto-hiring loser pawns every now and then. Um, yeah. Like, no, no, no. It 100%, it, it, it does the whole, like, your pawns come back from the rift, and, you know, um, Wooly shows up and uh, uh, dumps a fucking <laughs> dump truck of, 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 of raw Of a meat. bunch of shit that you're like, I don't think I should use most of this. Yeah, and everyone keeps dressing him up and trying to put shit on him. I'm like, stop dressing him up. I don't want that. <laughs> no. I'm in a weird place where like I have to buy completely new sets of gear when Big Page changes classes mm. because I can't figure out what is stuff I've, won uh, I've legitimately found in the world or what stuff that came back that was like wildly overpowered. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I'm like, I'm just going to buy a completely new set of fucking gear every single time yeah i don't care um no, no I'm, I'm i'm fine to to just like sort through and and uh yeah sell all the sell all the extra drunk and stuff but in any case i've um i've kind of whittled down i think um all most of the main up until that transition point or so and i'm kind of just picking at some of the dark spots on the map to see what's up to see where it says like okay you can't go any further than here like batal mm -hmm. it's like fuck you you know, and I was like, what if I put a mask on? And he's like, fuck you. And I'm like, all right, all right, all right. Hard, hard, hard limit, you know. There's a there's a quest that I, well Yeah, I, I I I get the feeling, you know. You can also uh you can also just sneak into the country oh, illegally. Well, there you go. I mean that's how I snuck into the capital to begin with. So Yeah. Um yeah, I don't know. And and uh also the 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 weird and interesting implications of having a item cloning shop are like oh this oh, can break the game in the, many the intentional ways is one so dd1 had a the forger um and dd2's forger works the same it is one of the most interesting yeah. things at putting an rpg because certain quests you can only get the good outcomes by tricking various people right i can feel i felt that like looking at that staring at that menu for a minute I was like, hold on a second. What is able to be out? Oh, just about anything. Anything. And, and there's a cost associated. So if you want to, yeah, fuck with the outcome of some quests, or in some cases, just like, I keep my fucking, I want that jail key, actually. You know, <laughs> I, th I think I'm going to hold on to that. Yeah. The, the, keeping the, the real jail key is like a really good example of what it would do. There's a, there's a couple of quests where people, there's two different quest givers that give you something really, really good, mm -hmm. but they both want all of the same item. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They both want five identical items. And so I was like, well, the, the correct solution here, obviously, is to make a bunch of fakes and give each of them half real and half fake items. And it worked. And it totally worked because they didn't check. Okay, okay, because uh, yeah, I like uh, I'm getting I'm getting me a Jadeite orb copied, and uh, yeah. I'll see what's gonna happen after that. That's your little tutorial for the forger. That's like, hey man, what if you just mm -hmm. what if you just gave them both the quest reward? Um, be awesome. Now here's a question I just thought of. Yeah, can you, for example, forge? I don't know, like a beggar's clothing. Yeah, totally. Would that work? No, because the quest changes as soon as you hand it over. Did you? Did you get the? Okay, so that I've seen two versions of that quest. I've okay, seen the one where I give it back to him, and I've seen the version where I give it back to his wife in the rich quarter. Oh. I did neither of those things. Yeah, you gave it to the 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 poor the girl. The poor girl. Yeah. Did I don't know what what was your outcome there? So, I so I the poor girl outcome is disastrous, right? Yeah, okay, you know about that. Yeah. I do, yeah. 
It's so the, really the, the, bad. So the beggar quest in uh, in DD2 is the one that I, I showed off in my video where you just have to watch this guy for like 40 minutes. Yes. And just trail him all over town. So you get his clothes. If you run up to him and just give him the clothes, he's like, oh, uh, fuck, uh, here's five grand. Get out of my face. Okay, okay. And that's the end of that, right? If you give it to the his poor girlfriend at the bar. Yeah. The beastman. Um, she goes, what? No, but we were supposed to run away together. Thank you for this. And then runs off. And then the next morning, a guard is like, yo, do you know what happened in here? Because it's a mess. There's blood everywhere. And it seems like that, that it seems like dude got murdered and then murder suicide because the, the beast girl kills herself too. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't know. It's it's a bloody mess in there. That's crazy. If you know what happened, tell me. And you're just like, oh, Jesus Christ. So um, the, if you give it to his rich wife, she um, <laughs> she's like, what? That sounds like bullshit. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just nag him about a bunch of shit he's supposed to do around the house. And I'm going to just leave these clothes out where he can see him uh, oh, and we'll see what happens okay and then you come back a couple days and she's like yep he's doing all his chores just like he's supposed to okay, okay. thanks a lot and then she gives you uh three of those rare gems uh which sell for like 7500 uh, so that's technically the, best the outcome. optimal outcome jesus because it's like okay it only shows you the two destinations like her or the or, or the the mistress yeah. um but you're like, well, fuck that guy, and and fuck the rich wife's like two line attitude that you get while while wandering up right off the bat. This poor lady, right? Let's yeah. let's go help her out, and then that just goes horribly wrong. So it's like, okay, got it. Um, so I was just like, there's yeah, a, there's a lot of quests um, that like they end, and you're like. I genuinely don't know if that's like the best outcome I could have gotten. It's, I, I have no idea. Well, so it certainly seems like the most content outcome. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like in, in KOTOR, some outcomes are like everything, all's well that ends well. Or um, the evil one. But then there's the like, oh, there's the outcome that has a whole epilogue of fucking sadness to it. Where it's like, whoa. But that's the one that was written out. Yeah, there's yeah. a there's a quest I would have got uh, that you uh, you can get for um uh, your Gregor's dead right oh uh wait he's the guy who brings you to the capital yeah that was he got watched okay so Gregor some some dude in the city watch is like bro I want to fuck Gregor's wife really bad but <sighs> he's always around so you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna send him to fight a uh the headless horseman right. And uh, you overhear this, and you go tell the wife, like, "Hey, yo, uh, that guy's trying to fuck you, and he, he set off your your husband to fucking die." She says, "No, you gotta fight." You go, "Oh no!" So you go to you go across the map to fight the Dullahan, right? And Gregor's there, is like, "Ah, oh, we got this guy." And then the Dullahan just kicked his ass into the fucking water, and he died instantly. And because he was in the water, I couldn't resurrect him. Oh. So then I had to go back to the wife and tell her the wife, like, hey, hey, you're, you're, oh, sorry, your husband's dead. Wait. Um, but doesn't and, his body uh, wind up in the morgue? And then she goes and becomes a nun. And I'm like, ah. Oh. And then when I was in the morgue trying to resurrect a character for a different quest, I see Gregor's body's right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But if I resurrect him now, she's not going to de nun. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Fuck it. I'm not wasting a wake stone on that. Yeah, okay, so I had the that similar example. I had um, the shadowy person is following you, right? Who could it yeah. be? And it's like, ah, oh, there's that fucker, and I tackled him. And then the game's like, ah, you got me. And then it's like, oh, do you want to pay him off, or you want to get paid off, or you want to fight? And so I was like, yeah, fuck this guy, right? So, yeah, yeah. so we go, we fight. And then in 0.4 seconds, my team and I murder him dead. <laughs> like, yeah. Right? And it's like, and then the quest just stays active. And it's like, what the fuck just happened? I just killed him. Why? What's going on? Re <laughs> reload, nothing. And it's like, well, I don't understand. So I'm like, okay, fuck this. And I look it up and it's like, oh, you're supposed to fight him slow enough that you get interrupted by Brant. 
And he goes, hey, yeah. we'll stop it. We'll take it from here. And then they go interrogate him. And then he him. goes to jail. And you can, yeah. But we killed him so hard so fast that that never happened. <laughs> so that I have to Fine. waste a wake stone on him. There's a you know? there's a quest uh, that uh, Susie talked about in her review where a guy's like, hey, man, uh, I need to make a, a piece of or I need to make a sculpture of a griffin uh, or paint a griffin. I forget what it is. Uh, so you you need to fight a griffin and, uh, f you know, so I can really get a good look at it in my mind's eye. And Susie describes that she like damn near one shot at the fucking thing, mm. like like iced it in like 10 seconds. And he's like, well. I didn't, I didn't get to look at it for shit. So this, this sculpture is <laughs> going to be really bad. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. No, there, there's definitely some fun moments like that. Um, I'm still having and I'm still properly annoyed by I just turned a corner and like Wooly the Pawn is disappeared. Just I don't know if well, you, you fell into the brine. Or, but it's like, it wasn't about Brian, it wasn't about falling off a ledge and I can go pick you up. You just despawned from the from the world. Well, um, I mean... You know, and so... Now you know what it's like to navigate with you, buddy. And so, I turn and it's gone, and, and I'm, uh, uh, I'm like, okay, let me wander back to town to go to the nearest uh, Riftstone to, to, to get him back. And then I wander back into town, and that's when a story event dragon attack is occurring. <laughs> oh, I know the exact one you're talking I'm about. I'm like, yeah. oh, motherfucker. Damn it. So I'm like, it probably would have been important to have you be here for this experience, but I guess that's done. You know? Um, Did you talk to the, the spearman before he left? Uh, I, I had an archer lady that hung out. And I talked to her. Wait, what town are you talking about? Uh, Melv? Yeah, Melv. Okay, so Ulrica is fighting yeah. uh, fighting the dragon there, obviously. Yeah. But there's also a, a mystic spearman, like a, a magic spearman, like Darth Maul dude, doing flips on the dragon. Oh, um, I I didn't talk to anybody like that. I was... Oh, uh, okay, because if you talk to him there he'll give you he'll just give you mystic spearman oh sick okay yeah i didn't i missed that entirely uh, uh. but now that you've done that he has now moved to his house he lives in harv okay so you can just go get that i mean there's that, infinitely that. missable things that happen in infinitely missable moments the way things are set up here um i was i i had maxed out mage so i switched over to archer and was just hitting sweet spots uh and mm -hmm. messing around with that for now so um i didn't get too close at any point um uh, but yeah, no, um, it's just ugh, <laughs> these 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 jank moments that are that occur that are just like that is not like I did nothing wrong here, you know. That is yeah. that the game just decided. It's it's a mix between oh it's cool that it's like this, and then five seconds later, but why is it like this mm -hmm, though? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like one of the ones that I found that's really funny. So the final, uh, one of the final sorcerer skills is called Maelstrom. It's the gigantic tornado. And uh, one of the things that I'm baffled by is why does the sorcerer love to target goblins or wolves right next to the ox cart with the most destructive spell in the game? And this is where I've learned <laughs> the moment you get interrupted, jump off the cart, run a mile down the road and bait everything away and then start fighting because it like literally I start doing fucking lightning and it, and like it feels like the character and camera just turn towards the ox cart and start Man, this zapping ox cart's it. cart's got to go. I don't <laughs> care for it. Like, I'm in the middle of zapping multiple enemies, and it's smartly targeting, and then just turns around to the ox cart and... Fuck, man. Sucks. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. That was very annoying. Um, Love that game. Yeah. Uh, so, um, it's so great. It's so awful. Also, like, just running into, again, just gonna fuck your shit up dragon on the on the mi mini-map, where it's like, I'm still not ready for this. The, you are just making me run a mile the other way and circle around an insane berth. To get to this stupid yeah, the, fishing village. The drakes, the drakes go from completely unwinnable to barely winnable to, yeah, I got this. 
Like that's the three states. Like it's not a gradient. It's 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 three states. I I came across a spot where I was like, "Ooh, I got the jump on one of these because you you walk out and there's a ballista pointed at it." You know? Yeah, that was a rough fight for me because the ballista hit it in the head instead of the chest. So, I aimed for whatever. Uh I thought I aimed for the head. I thought that was yeah. the move. Um and I got some damage in, and then I start. I kept using it while the fight, you know, happened. And then it got up close and broke the ballista, and then yeah. it just it turned into a slobber knocker. And uh, like every other Drake fight, it, it's me running away, <laughs> hightailing it while that fucking thing is on like my ass. Like a huge proportion of the Drake fight is, do you have a move that can hit the good weak point like a hundred times in a second? Ah, uh, well, archers are ready so for like, that. So like, um, I don't know if you've seen Helm Splitter or Skull Splitter on Thief. It's that spin move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The spin, the spin. Yeah, attack. that thing. Uh, the Warrior move where they it called Skyward Sunder where they do a huge slash straight up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the uh, male from from sorcerer uh the, you know anything the, that just just has a vertical pillar of attack i imagine the machine gun from the archer would be pretty good you too. wouldn't you you would think but nah, not really on the on the shitty one that attacked um the town it was good because it has like it's glowing don't hit me here yeah spots. Um, uh i actually found like it weirdly successful with um warrior to just do the skyward sunder move over and over and over because it does so much knockback that mm -hmm. what eventually happens is you do that and it just falls down mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and once they fall down i got really lucky on the last one and the sorcerer cast maelstrom on it and it did like 50 percent of its total health bar because the maelstrom was directly inside its hitbox okay and the monster had fallen over and couldn't move okay and you get the extra crit damage there too yeah yeah it's interesting i'm um yeah i'm having a very unique experience with this because i'm i'm going about it picking non-melee classes first you know just to see mm -hmm. that is a weird experience it is but I, i'm but it but it, it's telling me more about how these systems that are not the obvious mm -hmm. ones work you know like after archer are you gonna switch to sorcerer or are you gonna uh, i did sorcerer for a little bit and i didn't like it um, oh, that's right, you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, after that, I'm, 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 I'm gonna probably, yeah, I'm gonna go to something else. I'll see. But because mm -hmm. um, it, it is like in this, almost like souls, right? It's like, well, yes, melee is here, and we know all these weapon moves and stuff. But when you go into the non melee, you go into magic or archer or other types of builds, you have, you, it's like you're on the edges of what the game's intending for you here. So like, how well does this mm -hmm. work? You know, I'm curious to see. And, and um... it's extremely, extremely different. Yeah. Yeah. Using magic in that game. Magic is just a, you're just playing um, a, a RTS almost like you're just, yeah. you're standing back and governing the fight, you know? Um, well, no trickster is playing an RTS because trickster doesn't have any attacks. Oh, okay. Trickster is a 100% dedicated illusionist class that has no attacks. So you're just supporting the team? You are basically creating aggro dummies that force enemies to attack the aggro dummy instead. Okay. You're creating walls that your pawns and you can move through, but enemies can't. Interesting. Uh, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so but but the, the, the feeling so far has been get to the high ground or get as far away from the action as possible and just, mm -hmm. you know... And zap them. Zap. Um... And arching is like it was that at first, but then like find some weak spots, snipe if you can. Uh, but then once you get the ability to use an arrow while on something's back, then it's like, oh shit, okay, we have a reason to get up close. I'm just gonna cut it. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna stab it with my fucking arrow. I'm gonna do it. And you get the um, the Hawkeye jump kick back flip, you know, uh, um, which feels great. Yeah, it feel it'd be it'd feel better if you could do a special arrow when you flipped backwards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but the fact that you can't is a little bit bummer. Um, but yeah, still, you know, that's, it is interesting. And so like, yeah, like I feel like using those are telling me, are teaching me a bit more about how the game design is set up than just the, mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, if you swing your sword up close and climb on something, obviously that's going to feel like what it feels like, you know? Yeah. Um, it's the, going to be, it's it that the, the, the non melee stuff is going to be the, um, the, it, it's like, you can't compare how that is set up to any other game that is that is similar you know the fact that you cannot no it's it's pretty much completely unique the fact that there's no lock on 
except for the one it provides you with and you have to learn how to like work a, so a soft lock as part of the combat is yeah weird and, and and i've gotten used to it at this point but you're still a lot of your combat is me is hoping that you're pointing at the right thing you know and, and like archer is like the most straightforward class out of all of them mm -hmm. because it it works pretty much exactly how you would expect to work there's aim the arrow shoot the arrow or auto free shot the arrow mm -hmm. but yeah archer has like a weird downside in that um pawns are better at being an archer than you are they're gonna like they're gonna like, hit, they're gonna hit the spots well they they always they always free aim it but they free aim it fast okay so they they're like you know I, if you've had an archer pawn you'll end up in situations where you'll kill a goblin and they'll have four arrows sticking out of their eyes Jesus, because yeah, okay. your archer pawn was just like lighting them up mm -hmm. um yeah so anyway uh, i'm i'm uh, i'm you know con continuing to poke and again letting the crashes determine when i stop playing <laughs>